Welcome back. Today we are going to be making snow globes. The materials that we're going to be using are the mason jars, some bottle caps, a figurine, dye, dye, glitter, a spoon, water, and more water. <laughs> First we're going to be starting by, we're probably going to start by dyeing water, right? Sure, we can start there. We're going to be adding the drop of some food coloring. We're going to, we're using um, aqua teal food coloring just because we think that might give us the best. Go ahead and now stir it up. We're going to be adding a little bit of this darker blue water into this big pitcher. Ready? Now. So our next step is actually gluing the lid together and gluing our figurine onto the bottom of the lid. And we have we did a prototype of this, and what you can see is that our little reindeer inside here uh, was appropriately affixed to the bottom of the lid, uh, but the issue is actually that he is not sitting up quite high enough in order to be able to effectively see him. We need to build him up a little bit more. Okay, so we tried our hot glue and bottle cap idea, and whoop, this is how it turned out. The hot glue just melted the bottle caps, and it turned out lumpy. Yeah, it did not come out the way that we wanted it to. Not at all. So we set out to find a new idea, and Hannah came up with a great one. We are using um, rocks stacked rocks so it will they will not float and we don't have to use as much hot glue as we did for this actually what we're going to do is we're going to use silicone in order to uh, adhere the rocks together and then adhere the figurine to the rocks and it will actually give it a nice look as if the snowy owl is perching on a temple of rocks nice cairn of rocks all right, very good. Let's do. Let's start siliconing. Some what? Siliconing. Oh, silicone. <laughs> I definitely did not understand that. All right. Now that we have this curing, we will walk away from it, we will let it cure, and we're gonna go work on the 3D print of the base. To the 3D printer! All right. We chose to design our base in Fusion 360. We did this through a series of sketched circles that became cylinders, after we extruded them, and then creating additional circles which then became recessed holes. At the top edge, we decided to fill it, the, uh, fill it that edge and then create an interior hole to allow for the wires to pass through. Finally, we added a cylinder hole in the bottom of the 
base structure. And that was it. We then were able to take it from Fusion 360, save it for 3D printing, and export it out to Cura. From inside of Cura, we just did a, a, a basic um, fast or extra fast print uh, using our Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. And that was that. Has been done drying. <laughs> it has been done drying. It has been done drying. It definitely dried. Yep. Oh. <laughs> We're back. And our figurine is done drying and it looks really nice. We like how the look of the silicone dry kind of looks like ice melting. Yeah, it came out very nice. I'm very pleased with the result. And how about our 3D base? It looks amazing. I like the color. It it matches the water, and I think it looks nice. Yeah. I don't know if it matches the water, but it, it, it goes well together. It, it'll work. So. What are we doing now? The next step is putting this our colored water into our mason jar, and then adding the glitter. You can never have too much glitter, can you? No, you cannot. Right. My hands show that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and pour that in there. Great. All right, so why did we not fill it all the way to the top? Because we need to account for the mass of our figurine and- Wait, wait, hold on, the mass of it? The... Volume. The volume of it, yes, the volume of it. So we are accounting for that, which is why we did not fill it all the way. All right, so go ahead and test it out first. Okay. When you just see, when you test it out by putting it in there and just checking to see if it did it rise. It did rise, but not by a whole lot. So you could probably add some more water. Now the green is all wet. That's right. He just took a shower. Now we could have, uh, we could have tested by volume displacement. Whoa, there. Okay, we could have tested by volume displacement to figure out exactly how much uh, volume that figurine and stone ensemble there displaced, but that we didn't do great. that. That looks great. I mean, it's good, but you're still gonna be left with a pretty good-sized air bubble at the top. Okay, so let's, let's have we do the glitter and then finalize it with some more water. Let's start with. Blue glitter. Okay. Okay, oh, all right, good. Perfect. <laughs> I think you're going to add more. <laughs> well, put it down. All right. Put a thin film of glitter right on the top of the water surface here. Now, this will break it up. Good. He's gonna get covered in glitter in this test. Ready? Right. The dunk of glitter. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's all right. It's covered in glitter now. And so is the entire desktop. Okay, we filled it too much and it spilled everywhere. But we just cleaned it up. So, we're all good. And ready for test two? Yep, let's go for it. I don't know. Almost. Yeah, let's try it. That looks perfect. That's close, that's for sure. All right, go ahead and put the lid on there. Is it sealed tightly? You like can try. Really tight? 
Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. I got another full twist. eighth of a turn out of it there. Okay, so nice and tight. Hopefully it formed a good seal. Right? Let's flip it over and see what happens. All right, let's see if it's leaking. It looks good inside the jar, but... I don't see any leakage. I don't think it's leaking. Right. I don't see anything yet either. But how about we'll, how about if we leave this sit? Yeah. We right. will get a dry paper towel and put it under it, so that way we, we will see if there is any. We will know if it's leaking or not. And in the time while we're dealing with the the drying of it, then what we can do is we can work on the lights that are going to go inside the base, and we can also try and clean up some of this glitter. Clean up the glitter. Well, it'll never be gone now, but we'll clean up the glitter. We will work on the lights that are going to go inside the base and solder up the lights to our microcontroller that are going to program it. And yeah, we'll go from there. Our snow globe has an interesting feature to it in that we are adding lights. So at the bottom of the base, we have left a, uh, a cavity that's going to be the place where we're gonna be able to house our microcontroller, which in this case is an Adafruit uh, Gemma and a little Li poly battery. And it will also be where the, the cables go uh, from the strip of LEDs. So what we do is we're gonna actually have the LEDs wrapped around and inside here with the wires being tucked down through that hole that's inside of this uh, top cavity. And that will illuminate the mason jar and everything inside the mason jar and hopefully give it a nice aurora borealis look to it. Yep. So the first step that you should be aware of is that we actually took and we cut this uh, section of seven LEDs out from the, uh, the entire roll of pixels. The next step is that we need to snip off the excess wires that we have here. Hannah, if you could do the honors, please. And go ahead and just trim yep, those two back there. Okay. Yep, perfect, go for it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off this end piece as well. So if you wanna trim off that end there. Cut. Very good. And now what we have to do is we have to strip the wires back. Cool. Hey, it came off. You got it, good job. That's one. Good, that worked. Number three. Okay, number three. Yep, work. Perfect. Awesome. So we have all three wires nice and exposed. All right, we're about to start soldering. Hannah's going to do the soldering. She has plenty of experience and practice doing soldering and yep. different soldering projects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tin the leads on uh, these wires here. All right, we've tinned the leads. They look really nice. Yep. We're now going to start soldering in onto the Gemma microcontroller. We're gonna start with the, uh, the red, which is the power, uh, which is the positive, which is the V out on the Gemma. Your soldering joints look like they're, like they're decent. They're gonna work for us. Um, so, yeah. I mean, now it's time to program. So we're gonna walk over to our computer. First, we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna walk over to our computer. We're going to show you the programming for this. And then we'll come back and we'll fit it into the base and see how it looks. Programming time. Right. Coding for this project was done in Arduino using the Adafruit LED NeoPixel library as our base structure. Hannah and I have used this in the past to create NeoPixel goggles, and so we were both familiar with the code. Hannah did the vast majority of the alterations to the code, uh, getting the desired Aurora Borealis effect using the LED strand test uh, code just modified. 
We uploaded the program onto Adafruit's Gemma microcontroller, which was perfect for our needs. We've programmed it, and this is a moment of fruit. I'm really excited. So am I. Let's see what it looks like. We realized that we had done it, and... Had done what? Had already put all of this stuff on. And we couldn't slip it through, so we just decided to slip the actual wire through it. Yeah, all the LEDs dripped through the, the hole. That wasn't our original intent, but it worked out just fine. Yep. It is not, does not want to be in its new home. Right, so it doesn't love to conform to that uh, Being round cylindrical uh, shape here, but... I got it in. Okay. And let's... It fits! It fits. And yeah. let's test the programming. Go ahead and turn it on. Turn the Gemma on. Turn on. Yep, it does turn on. Ready? No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll do a, a nice uh, lights out shot in a minute here. I think what we've decided to do, though, is use a can, a can of generic black, black beans because it actually fits very nice and snugly so once we snugly snug <coughs> snug snug all right we're gonna go with snug um <laughs> so once we silicone around the perimeter here the edge uh, the black beans will have to apply a nice steady pressure to the uh to the edge so let's do that So wait 30 minutes, test, and see if it's uh, if it adhered. All right, the silicone should have dried. So go ahead, let's mm -hmm. spill the beans. Let's spill the beans. Come on, beans, spill. Mm -hmm. All right, that came out nicely. Let's turn it on. Looks like the silicone is somewhat set. We thought it was all the way dry. It's close. But it right. should work. It should work. So, why don't you go ahead and put uh, the snowy owl into the base? Snack fit. Fits good. Fits nicely. All right. Now let's do some night shots. Night shots. Bye. Oh my goodness. Oh, that looks really nice. Oh wow. That looks like the aurora. Why don't you go ahead and just tilt the whole thing over a little bit and shake it up and see if you can get some of that glitter moving. Oh, wow. Yeah, that looks great. The glitter that landed on him kind of makes his feathers look like they're shiny. Oh, very nice. Nicely done. We need to give him a name. Well, this turned out really well. I'm very pleased. Yes. Exceeds our expectations. Definitely. I mean, this all started out as just a daydream. Yep. From idea to concept to final product, and you got to see it all here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. We're, we're glad. We hope that you liked it. Um, and if so, please give us a thumbs up. And what else? Feel free to subscribe to our channel. And ring that bell if you'd like notifications of the next time we put out new content. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.